Now that we've drawn out the layer one aspect of the network design and also showed our example as to how to build that in Lucidchart, we're going to move on to layer two diagram. And this really concerns itself with VLANs, port channels, things like that. But we're only going to talk about VLAN implementation in this video and how that can be illustrated in our network diagram. So if we take a similar topology, but this time we will build it out with a couple of PE nodes. The PE nodes will then connect to a CE router. And imagine this is we're handing off two circuits to a single site. Then we have an interconnect between the two CEs or CPEs. Once we have the two CEs in place, we should draw in a couple of LAN switches to hand off the WAN service to. So if we illustrate that like this and like this, and then below there, we effectively have the campus LAN environment. In this particular diagram, we're trying to illustrate where VLANs are presented. So how can we do that? Let's just simplify it by saying that we have two VLANs, VLAN 20 in green, and I'm going to start drawing these in. Okay, and I'll explain the method to the madness to that in a second. And then let's say we have VLAN 30. Here and here. And we actually need another couple. So let's say that we also have VLAN 130 and VLAN 120. This is VLAN 120, 120, and this is VLAN 130, and this is VLAN 130. Then I'm going to illustrate um, VPN V4 and LDP here, and I'll explain why. In summary, what we are presenting in this diagram is the layer 2 perspective of how we can hand off a couple of VRFs. 30 and then VRF, VRF 20 in the WAN environment. In order to do this and make sure that it's end to end, we are effectively handing off a tagged port from the service provider here and here on the PE to CE link to to be able to hand off a different, different couple of VRFs to this CE router on the WAN interface. So the two VRFs are being handed off on the WAN interface, and then we also want to hand these off to the LAN environment, but we need to use a different VLAN or a different tag on each of the LAN to WAN handoffs. This type of design is not your standard VLAN configuration is this would be a layer 3 interface, this would be a layer 3 interface, but it would accommodate for uh, both of these subnets being handed off to the LAN. 
Then what we might have is a load of other subnets down here, which are effectively VLANs that operate on the, the LAN environment. So in summary here, we're plumbing VRFs over a tagged port from the PE to the CE. In a service provider environment towards a customer environment. And then what we would do is have to illustrate how those VRFs are being handed off to the LAN, which is what we have illustrated um, CE to LAN switch. The reason that we have, in this particular design, put VPN, V4 and LDP here to build a BGP session or an IBGP session is to allow for, in the future, if we wanted to add um, VRF, if, this, if these all correspond to VRFs, then we might want to add VLAN One forty here and here, and then we would then need to propagate that as VLAN forty on the tagged handoff PE to CE. This is one way of doing VLANs when you're doing a layer three handoff from WAN to LAN. A more simple approach might be something simply that looks like this. You have a router with a routed link to a switch and then a switch has VLANs which comes off it like this. So that's VLAN 20, that's VLAN 10, and so on. If you had a routed link towards another switch, you could have something like this, and you had a load of VLANs that you wanted to illustrate on that link to you know, if you had like VRFs going down there or something like that, you might have something like this, VLAN 110, VLAN 120, and so on. We'll now flip to the Lucid chart diagram and I'll highlight a few things as to how this might look in a wider design when we're talking about VRFs and uh, VLAN tagging handoff. Now what we'll do is we'll create a VLAN based network diagram quite quickly utilising the topology that we used in the demo for layer 1. So that was here. So an easy way to transfer this across is control A, control C, control V. And what we need to transform this into is something that resembles a, you know, a VLAN handoff. So first of all, what I would suggest that you do is delete all the physical stuff from here. So all the port numbers that we added in for the physical. We might or might not want to keep the, the two links. But what I am going to do is give myself a bit more space as to how we can illustrate this. I'll delete the demarcation point for the moment. If we take the methodology that we used in the last um, whiteboard sketch, then what we want to start doing is defining our VLAN structure. And we can do that by defining, I can't remember what we made it, but let's just say VLAN 10. 20, 30, 40, or let's make it 10, 20, 110, 
and 120 and give it some colour Okay, so now we have four VLANs and we just need to decide where they are actually going to go. I'm going to simplify this diagram a little bit and illustrate the core switch just as a single logical switch because there's ways and means that we can make it look like a single switch. So I think in the diagram, if I bring that back up here, the way that we illustrated that here is we had this dashed line around the two switches to illustrate that it's a switch stack. But we're not doing that in this diagram, we've just got a single switch. We will go with, um, you know, having a couple of VRFs though. So from remember, this is only from the VLAN perspective. So this is PE to CE. Therefore, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, this is um, this is going to illustrate the VLANs that are associated to the VRF. Sorry, I had to think about that there. Um, what we should probably do is make this also red and this also green. to tie things together and then that means that when we're doing the layer 3 handoff you know VLAN 10 on the WAN side ties to VRF 10 and 20 but then when we hand off to the, the core switch from the CPE on the LAN side we need two new VLANs because if we used VLAN 10 all the way through then it would mean that this was a transparent layer 2 device and that's not what we want to do. The CPE is this router, it's not the switch. Okay, so if we then evolve the design a little bit further and we say we want a couple of VLANs to be presented to the LAN from the core switch Let's just say this is VLAN 50 and 60 and my VLAN structure here is terrible but it's just for illustration purposes and let's make this one purple and this one below it blue. What we're trying to illustrate here then is from the core switch down to switch 01 we might only put VLAN 50 but from core 01 to switch 02 we might only do VLAN 60. If we move this over here and let's say that we had another switch in play, we put the connection between there and there. This switch might have both VLAN 50 and 60 on the trunk. And then I think when you look at this, it's very clear if these were a bit more descriptive. So if we said um, VRF A service provider and then we say uh, this is VRF A LAN for example and this is VRF service provider and you can come up with your own 
um, information to put in here. And then if we come down here, and these are the LAN, this might be data VLAN, and this might be voice. But it would probably make sense for voice to be everywhere, so perhaps we do this. But for whatever reason, the data VLAN is only presented to this side on its own. Maybe um i don't know it's a i don't know i don't know what the reason for that would be it's a conceptual diagram anyway okay so hopefully this gives a good illustration as to how we can actually build the layer two representation within the diagram how this might look in a wider design is something along the lines of this so it's like here's one i prepared earlier what we we're talking about and focusing on here is the site aspect And you can see from the site aspect, there's multiple VRFs here. So this is like a key. And then if we zoom into the diagram at the site, we've got VLAN 150, VLAN 1100, and those are tied to VRFA, VLAN 250, and 1200 and 200. They're all tied to VRFB. And then if we were to add more VLANs for whatever reason in the network design, we have VRF, C, D, and E. But there might be no VLANs, uh, so what we're trying to do here is tie the Layer 2 connectivity to the higher Layer level, layer 3 connectivity when we start working with VLANs and uh, VRFs and things like that. Um, as mentioned before, here's the LDP, or the effectively an MPLS link, which gives the flexibility to add VRFC on the uplink downlink, but as we've got a BGP session, which is not pictured in this diagram because it's layer two, that would automatically be propagated between the two uh, CEs um, if we added more VLANs on the uplinks or the downlinks, it would automatically be propagated over the BGP VPN V4 session. We don't have in this particular diagram um, VLAN information in the data center, but as part of a wider design, if the focus was not just on the, the remote site at the bottom and the handoff on from the WAN perspective, if there was a wider remit, then you could apply this methodology to different parts of the infrastructure. That concludes our Layer 2 network diagram overview session. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for your attention and see you next time for the Layer 3 video.